You are not born from love. You are born from strategy, from betrayal, from theft. Your existence is biological terrorism. Your mother treats parenthood like burglary, quick, efficient, emotionally vacant. She flies above the countryside like death with wings. She watches smaller birds who spend weeks building homes from grass and spider silk. They never suspect they're building their children's tomb. She watches them lay their first egg, blue and speckled like broken sky. Then she drops down, 11 seconds. She lands with surgical precision. One gulp, and their genetic legacy vanishes down her throat. Then she squats, shivers, and lays you. Her masterpiece of deception in a shell that looks innocent. Then she flies away. Her maternal instincts expire like a parking meter. You are no longer her problem. The mother who will raise you returns to her nest. She finds everything exactly as she left it, except for the part where it isn't. She settles onto her nest. She believes the universe makes sense. Your shell cracks first. This is design, not coincidence. You emerge looking like something evolution should have thrown away. Blind, pink, disgusting. A piece of chewed gum with murder on its mind. You cannot see. You cannot fly. You cannot even hold up your massive head. But you know exactly what to do. The other eggs sit around you. They pulse with developing life. These are siblings you will kill before they take their first breath. Instinct whispers its cold math. Resources are limited. Competition means death. Nice guys finish extinct. You begin your first job, mass murder. You wedge your soft body beneath each egg. Your back becomes a loading dock for baby genocide. One by one, you move each potential sibling to the nest's edge. Then you push, plop, plop, plop. Your first performance review, perfect genocide. Your foster mother returns to silence. She sees what she needs to see. A baby, her baby, opening its mouth like an orange wound. Babies must be fed, so she feeds you, and feeds you, and feeds you some more. Your mouth becomes a weapon. It hijacks her brain. She brings earthworms the size of snakes. She crams them down your throat with the devotion of a slave. You grow faster than time-lapse photography. Within days, you dwarf your victim, a monster living in a house meant for something civilized. She struggles under the effort. Her wings drag like broken umbrellas. Her beak cracks from stress. Her eyes hollow out from exhaustion. But she returns. Every single time. Something deeper than logic drives her back to feed her destroyer. Your bones creak as they expand rapidly. Patchy feathers sprout like disease. When your eyes finally open, they are black and alien. Windows into a soul that operates on different rules than the rest of creation. You see her clearly now. Not mother, but resource. A very tired, increasingly useless resource. You outgrow the nest like a tumor. Outgrows its host. You sit on the edge now. A grotesque baby bird the size of a house cat. Your foster mother panics. She flutters around you with emotions you don't understand and don't care about. You fall. There is no triumphant first flight, just gravity doing its work. You hit the ground hard, but you survive. You always survive. You stumble through the bushes like a drunk predator. Ugly and confused, but alive. She follows you still, still faithful to the thing that will kill her. You learn to hop first, then flutter. Then you manage brief, chaotic flights that look more like controlled falling. She continues bringing you food. Her body wastes away as yours grows strong. She no longer recognizes herself in puddles. Just bones with wings, chasing a predator she thinks is her child. Then one day you achieve real flight. Not graceful, not high, but genuine. You don't thank her. You don't say goodbye. You simply leave, because that's what you do. She dies shortly after, her body spent from a war she never knew she was fighting. Her death is quiet and unremarkable. The forest doesn't pause for her sacrifice. It continues, indifferent as mathematics. You wander now, a fully grown cuckoo with all the charm of death with wings. 
Your call has grown strong and harsh, a bubbling sound that accuses the world, territorial noise that announces your presence like a biological air raid siren. You are alone by design. Evolution programmed you for destruction, not friendship. You don't build anything. You steal what others build. You don't form bonds. You exploit them. You exist as nature's cruelest joke. You find your first nest to rob as an adult. A small bird's carefully built home. You study it like a thief planning a heist. But your first attempt goes wrong. The small bird returns early. She catches you trying to plant your egg. She screams and attacks your head with tiny, furious violence. You retreat with your dignity in pieces. Your second attempt fails even worse. You target a robin's nest this time. You hover above it, planning your attack. But a hawk appears from nowhere like a feathered missile. You flee in terror. The robin's eggs remain safe from your interference. Two failures. In the wild, failure often means death. But you keep trying because persistence separates successful parasites from extinct ones. Other cuckoos drift through your territory like shadows with bad attitudes. You encounter one, female, cold, indifferent. The mating that follows is nature's least romantic moment. Brief, mechanical, joyless. No courtship, no flirtation, no tenderness. Just biology completing its bare minimum requirements. She leaves immediately after. You don't watch her go. Watching would mean caring, and caring isn't part of your programming. You return to your true work, the systematic destruction of other birds' lives. You study each species like an actor studying a role. Your eggs change to match theirs. Shape, color, pattern, perfect counterfeits designed by evolution. You destroy hundreds of nests over the years. You become a one bird disaster zone. Empty nests and broken foster parents mark your trail. Each success makes your species stronger. Each failure eliminates competition. You thrive the way all parasites thrive. Quietly, efficiently, without anyone noticing. But age comes like a bill collector. Your wings start to ache in the mornings. Your call grows weaker. You miss branches during landing. You nearly become someone's dinner. A fox gets close enough to bite your tail feathers. A few downy reminders that your reflexes are failing you. Your eyes start to dim. The world becomes blurry around the edges. You make a terrible mistake. You confuse a killer bird's nest for a harmless one. You place your egg directly into the beak of a bird that eats cuckoo eggs for breakfast. Your genetic investment vanishes with one crunching bite. You try again, you fail. You try again, you fail again. You sit alone on a high branch. The world below seems strange and foreign. Songbirds fuss over their real children. You call out with your rasping voice. No one answers back. The forest has completely forgotten you exist. Your final winter arrives early. Storms catch you off guard. You can't fly fast enough to escape the weather anymore. You find shelter in a thorny bush, a prickly hotel with no room service and no warmth. The cold creeps through your bones like ice water. You shiver in the darkness. You listen to wind tearing through branches. For the first time in your life, you remember things. The nest where you were born, the blind groping in the dark, the first egg you pushed over the edge. The first murder you committed with your tiny body? You feel no regret. Regret is for creatures with different programming. But you feel something else. A weight that isn't physical. A final accounting of your life. Morning comes with gray clouds. The sun rises like a dying flashlight. You do not rise with it. Your body grows stiff in the cold. Your beak opens slightly as if you have one last thing to say, but can't remember what it was. Your wings curl inward like closing parentheses around the sentence of your life. Crows find you first. Nature's cleanup crew. Efficient and without sentiment, then come the beetles. Then time itself does its slow, patient work. Your bones will bleach white beneath the fallen leaves. Another small story added to the forest floor's vast collection of forgotten tales. 
But somewhere else, in a bush, just like the one where you died, a warbler tends to her nest with nervous energy. Five eggs rest in her carefully woven home. One egg is slightly larger than the others, just a little bit paler. She doesn't notice the difference, but she will notice. Too late. The cycle continues. Indifferent as mathematics, efficient as death itself. Your legacy isn't love or memory or monuments. It's simply this. Somewhere in the world, a small pink thing is learning how to push.